On this episode of Liberty Blue Podcast, is Libor Hayek actually good at hockey? We'll see you in a minute. The Liberty Blue, Liberty Blue. Rangers Podcast. Rangers Podcast. With Andrew Chelby. Andrew Chelby. And Nick Zoraris. Nick Zoraris. Rangers fans, welcome to the best Rangers podcast in town. I'm Andrew Chelney alongside Nick Zararis, and we are Liberty Blue. We scream about the Rangers so that you can save your voice. That's how deeply we care about you. We appreciate that you've joined us for the ride. This is episode 22, live on Twitch. We will put the full video up on our YouTube, Liberty Blue Podcast, and the audio version will be available as an audio podcast as well. Search Liberty Blue on your favorite podcast flat, flat, uh platform and it should be there give the show that shiny and illustrious five-star review on apple Podcasts. it helps the show out more than you think it does at liberty blue pod on twitter and instagram i'm at chelney andrew c-h-e-l-n-e-y andrew and that is nick zararis nick z-a-r-a-r-i-s those are our personal twitter handles to follow as well nick they beat detroit and arizona aren't you thrilled I am not ready to jump off of a bridge or be committed to the grippy sock floor of a mental institution. Let's put it like that. <laughs> they they beat the bad teams and they lost to a bad team and they also lost to the Islanders in which they had a 3 nothing lead. Like this is they played well against Nashville. They really they should have won that game. Just bounces didn't go their way. They once again kept passing it all around the ice as opposed to just shooting which is going to drive me into that mental, mental institution that you were mentioning just a second ago, like, shoot the puck. I, at a certain point, you're not going to score any goals unless the puck goes towards the net. Unless, of course, you're Jacob Truba, in which case he would shoot six feet wide. But, you know, he shouldn't be playing anyway because he's injured. It's November. Don't play him. Gerard Gallant's putting him out there anyway. I digress. So let's start with the abstract before we move into the game by game. Um, they're still not it's just not pretty to watch right now. Even last night against Arizona where they were winning that game and they, they, they took care of business. That game was ugly. That was one of the worst first periods I have ever seen a Rangers team play in my entire life. Um, to only have five shots on goal through 30 minutes of ice time against a team that is going to be competing for Connor Bedard is just, it's not acceptable. There are too many good players on this team. Like even if you're in a rut, even if you're not having shooting luck, uh, it's unacceptable to be playing as poorly as they did in that first period. That, granted, they eventually got going, the bounces started going their way and they were able to pile it on. But right now my biggest thing with the Rangers is it all kind of seems very fragile and tenuous where if they don't get the right bounce to go their way in a certain game, it doesn't feel like last year's team where they can keep plugging away and find a way to score. And it's just, they're fighting it so hard on offense right now. Even a one goal lead seems pretty insurmountable. It has been a growing concern this entire season of the Rangers kind of showing up and expecting the goals to just come whenever they so choose. And we talked about this uh, on episodes before this season of just like, they will against ours. I think it was against Arizona as well. The last time that they played them of just the idea that the Rangers have seemingly have, in, have put out on the ice. Now, whether they have, are thinking about this when they play or not kind of doesn't matter because that's this is what it looks like when they actually play is oh this is a bad team the goals will come we don't kind of we don't have to put in 100 percent of the effort because they like we are so obviously the better team here so it doesn't matter that we don't score now because we'll score later and again i do i think that they employ that in the locker room no i don't know but this is how visually it looks like they are playing on the ice when they are playing a team that's not as great as some of the uh, some of the best opponents that they'll face in in the NHL. And this is a terrible way of thinking because you have to beat the you have to beat bad teams to make the playoffs. You have to do it because if you are are only if you're only beating the good teams, but you're missing out on points against the bad teams. Then it's the same exact thing as if you would be beating all the bad teams but losing the good teams. You're not in the playoffs. 
you have to beat whoever's in front of you. And for the Rangers to only have five shots on goal or, or whatever it was through through half the game against the Coyotes, I like it, it's it's November. It's it's still there's a lot of time left. But at the at the end of the day here, this is the same head coach. This is the same system. This is virtually the same team that they had all of last season and throughout the playoffs. They should not be looking as disinterested as they currently are for long stretches of the game. Now, even, even against Nashville and all these teams, like they played well, but ultimately they couldn't get the goals in. And against Arizona, they kind of look like they didn't want to be there for half the game. So let me start with this. We talked about it a little bit last week in terms of just they don't have a lot of raw finishers. Most of their best players are playmakers. They're good at making other players around them better, setting them up. And this is an argument I got into on Twitter for a lot of August, because as you remember, Andrew, not a lot goes on in the month of August in the hockey community. And I got into an argument with a few different people that the roster in the playoffs last year was more talented than the roster they were going to dress on opening night whenever opening night finally came. And I think the kid line in the playoffs kind of got everybody's hopes up of like, even if they split them up, the goals will come. And Kako and Lafreniere were not the problem in the top six when they were both playing up there before Gallant put the kid line back together last week. But the goals weren't coming. And last year, God bless Frank Vitrano. He put the puck in the net. They needed somebody who could do that in that role. Andrew Kopp got cold in the playoffs, but in the regular season, he was able to put the puck in the net. Right now, every goal is precious. I mean, they lost to Nashville. They didn't score once. They had five power play opportunities. That's the reason they lost, because they're just not getting anything at five on five. And in the games that are close like that, if they're not going to get one on the power play, they're not going to score because that's just the way this team is. And there aren't any obvious solutions. And we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the, the spitball ideas we've seen floating around and people who suggested ideas based on questions we got. So we'll spitball on that for a second. But before the last thing, before we start, we'll start with the Islander game because we'll go chronologically. It's just frustrating to watch a team that isn't putting the puck in the net because there are nights where it just doesn't feel like it's going to go in like the Nashville game. Not, neither team scored a goal in that third period. That entire third period, it was a one-goal game, and the Rangers were chasing it and chasing it and chasing it. They pinned Nashville in their own zone for long stretches of time, but it never really felt like they were going to score. And it's really frustrating when you're stuck like that because you know it, eventually it'll come, but the clock does eventually run out. No matter how well you play, eventually if you don't put the puck in the net, the game ends. It's also as if a lot of teams in the NHL will watch demos of you and how you play, and they will watch the tape, and and they'll go, oh, on, the Rangers on the power play love to pass the puck around and eventually pass to Zibanejad for the one-timer to score, and if you take that passing lane away, the Rangers have nothing, because all, all the Rangers will do is if that pass doesn't work once, they'll try it again. If it doesn't work again, they'll try it again. And they will keep trying it until the power play is over, and that's that. And that's really one of the, the the red flags that I have for this team right now is they aren't adapting to what is happening on the ice in that specific situation. If that cross seam pass isn't going through, stop trying it. Try something else. Try something else, please. Please, for my sanity, try something else. The entire Nashville game, they kept trying that cross seam, that, that beautiful play, that one extra pass. Just put it on the net. You can't score unless you take shots on the net. And please hit the, and please hit the net if you do take a shot. Like, it, it, it's, it's really just, it, it, it's strange to me how this team can look so good at some points of the season and then like the very next night they look as if they're terrified of shooting the puck they would rather pass it 900 times and go for the go for the highlight reel play as opposed to hey like pittsburgh did this for when they when they won their cups pittsburgh loved doing this of we will shoot from anywhere and everywhere and we'll have all the forwards just clamored and go straight for the blue paint and just and, and put home any loose rebound that is there that's how they scored a lot of goals during that during those cup runs and and uh, and just like you i'm not saying you have to do that every single game every single moment but like you got to put some of that because those passes won't be there every single game 
you need a diverse way to score. You need a you need a, a variety of options. It's the same thing as we talk about in football, same thing in basketball, where you got to do things to set up other things. And the Rangers only have that one trick where they have the cross team. They're still not great at engaging a four check, forcing the other team into making mistakes. And that's really where we saw the Rangers at their best, especially in the playoffs, were the games where they were able to hold the other team in their zone, hold a long cycle, wait till they got a good opportunity and then take a shot. Whereas especially I would say the Nashville game, it, it got to a point where they were just throwing the puck from 40 feet away at the net with no chance of going in, no screen, nobody crashing the net. And I, the thing I would say is it's a combination of bad luck and maybe, I, I don't know if confidence is the right word, but something along those lines where you know you need a goal, you're pressing a little bit, you're squeezing your stick a little bit harder, you're trying a little bit harder, you're going to be more liable to make a bad turnover, going to be more liable to take a penalty because you're pressing so hard. It would be ideal if we could strike a nice balance between pressing so hard in a game like against Nashville, whereas looking like they were concerned with the four o'clock football scores in the Coyotes game, because those guys had no interest in playing in that first period. I get it. You're on a back to back. So is Arizona. Granted, Arizona didn't have to travel, but Arizona's on a back to back, too. There aren't excuses for we're tired. We're hurt. Everybody's tired. Everybody's hurt. This is the NHL. And if you're Jacob Truman, maybe don't play for, for like a week or two because you're clearly injured. It's November. Sit out a week. Sit out 10 days at Gerard Gallant, please. Like, this is not the conference finals. This is yeah. literally the second week of November, as I look to my calendar here because I don't know what day it is. But it's the second week of November here. Like, maybe maybe don't play your top – maybe don't run your top four defenseman into the ground in November – because you're going to need him come April. Okay. You know, so but I'm not, I'm not a head coach my memory. NHL, so what do I know? You jog my memory about something. You remember Kevin Shattenkirk's first year as a Ranger where he, tore sure his men, where he tore his meniscus in November and the Rangers let him play with a torn meniscus through February and he was not very good because he was playing on a torn meniscus all year. They shut him down and then they got rid of him. Um, don't do that to Truva because you're stuck with that contract for a lot longer and buying that out that would be bad if you had to buy out that contract because you ran him into the ground. That would be very bad. And, and we talk about it all the time. There's a point where trying to gut through something for the team is hurting the team. If you're actively sucking on the ice, that's hurting the team. I, I, I'm i sure the guys appreciate that you're trying, that you're gutting it out. You're still not helping the team win by going out there and being bad. It's it's very complicated. It's a nuanced thing to explain, but it's important. One of the red flags here that we have to address with this Rangers team is that they are playing Jacob Truba right now on defense, despite him clearly being injured, because they have nobody else to trust right now that can play at the NHL level. You had somebody in Nose Lundquist. You traded him away for a first-round pick and a fourth-round pick. Okay, cool. Those picks can't play hockey right now. Uh, you don't have anybody that can slot in and play. You don't. No. You don't. Like you don't have anybody in the AHL that can just soak up minutes. At, at what you're gonna do? Like, you're gonna bring Libor Hayek up to the top four, which granted he hasn't been playing badly like at all. Like, he's actually we'll talk about him in a little bit. Like he's actually been playing playing pretty well. Like, it's it's. Maybe, maybe we gotta we gotta put some respect on that guy's there because he's he's looked pretty good the last couple of weeks. We yeah. there's nobody in the AHL right now that the Rangers can bring up to to just play hockey on the blue line right now. And that's why they are continuing to put Jacob Truba out on the ice despite his clearly injured status, and he's not playing the way that he can play. And if you're Chris Drury right now, you don't have a lot of cap space. Like you, you have to, you have to do something because all your, because all that's going to happen is Jacob Trouba is going to continue to get worse because of this injury that's not healing, and you don't have a plan B. Okay, well, what if, what if somebody else in the Rangers goes down? What if another defenseman goes down? Now what? Now you're really sc scrambling to find a warm body to put on the blue line. Like this, this can't go on for for too much longer. Chris Shuri has to figure something out and do it pretty quickly. All right, let's get into the game. The Islander game, um, 
So I was at the Devils Flames game last night, watching the Ranger game on my phone, looking up and down at the hockey on the ice and on the, my phone. And by the time they lost to the Islanders, I was very much, very much just at the point where like, I want to go home. I'm tired. We got to see if the, if we're going to have a country in the morning. Like I was very, very over it on Tuesday of last week. And just, it's so frustrating to consistently lose to the Islanders. I know we talked about this two weeks ago after the first time that they got shut out, but the Islanders just give the Rangers fits with the way they play, with the style they play, the types of players they have. And it's maddening because most nights, if you score three against the Islanders, that's a good night. The Islanders are a pretty good defensive team. They're not as shut down as they've been in years past, but even against Varlamov, who first, decent NHL backup, pretty good backup to score three and lose. That sucks. That's just, that sucks. You can't, you can't let up the, the gas against the others. Yeah. Like this is a team that will wreck you. If they, if they feel like you think you've won the game and they've shown this multiple times already this season where they've come back from third period deficits. If they feel like you were starting the turtle or, or you feel like you've already won the game, they will come a full, they will turn a full 180 on you and say, absolutely no, you are not. This is our game. Come back and score 8,000 goals in the third period or, or overtime and win the game and steal two points from you. That's just what they've been doing all of this season. And that's what they did against the Rangers. Like the Rangers were up. They, they they scored three goals. They like they were dominating for the first half of the game. That was all Rangers. It was all the Rangers and their offense, and they were cycling and they were they were they had possession of the puck for pretty much the entire first half of the game, and then the others said, "Ah, we're not gonna let that happen anymore." And the Rangers let let it happen. They let it slip away. The Islanders took control. They dominated the second half of the game, and they never looked back. And you needed a, a great save from Shisurkin to, to steal a win, and that didn't happen. And that's I'm not blaming Shisurkin; it just is what it is. Like that, that's one of those games where you need you need a hot you need Dominic Hasek in there to to literally steal you a win, and that didn't and that didn't happen. Not to the fall of Shisurkin. Like hey, if the team played better in front of him for the, for the second half of the game, they would have easily won, but they didn't. They kind of just fell apart. They, they let the Islanders come back in, and ultimately they they. Look, they it was a it was a loss that Rangers never should have had. Yeah, no, I mean I'm looking at it right now. Fifty three score percent of the scoring chances, seventy percent of the expected goals, sixty percent of the high danger, on three percent shooting. Um, that's the issue. Is the finishing is a problem, and it's why I'm again, once again, wearing an Islander shirt on the stream because I made the same bet. Because I I figured, come on, they're not going to lose to Varlamov. Varlamov's not very good. But here I am, very much still wearing an Islanders T-shirt on this on this podcast because I, I, it's better than actually losing money. It, just losing your shame, shame you can recover. Money, unless you earn more of it, you're not just going to get it back like you will eventually get my shame back. Any last thoughts on the Islanders before we talk about Detroit? Stop throwing, please. Stop throwing. All you need to do is stop throwing, and you will win hockey games. Like you yeah. score three. Like this is a team that has had trouble scoring despite controlling play for for a lot from a majority of games you score three goals like this is your chance to just win a game yeah stop throwing like what are you doing you need the points you need yeah. them especially against the islanders who yeah. you are going to be in competition with for a playoff spot absolutely okay so detroit uh this is the first non-annoying Rangers Red Wings game in years, maybe since like Obama was president, where it wasn't a, where it wasn't a one goal game. On since Dukakis ran for governor. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's been a while. Usually those games are one nothing, two one, three two that go into overtime, and every Ranger fan is like, "How is Jimmy Howard doing this? Jimmy Howard sucks." Or and they poured it on. They got the secondary scoring. They got goals from guys in the bottom six. They got a Libor Hayek goal. They got a Gautier goal. Go. They got a Gaudreau goal. That's the kind of game where you, you realize the statistical regression that happens because against the Islanders, they shot 3%. And then against Detroit, they shot 23%. That's the kind of statistical regression that, that makes hockey so random and so frustrating and frankly so entertaining there aren't sports that have crazy swings like that in terms of game to game results because of the type of outcome you need to get a goal to happen in the nhl um they took care of business they shouldn't have been in that sure. game 
it was a close game. They pulled away at the end of that game and they poured it on once the floodgates opened. But that was a good way to end the losing streak. I think they had lost three in a row going into the Detroit game. So it was a good way to kind of put a kibosh on that. But again, they have to find a way to play like that more consistently where it is guys from the secondary line scoring, where if you get goals from the third and fourth line, it's really going to lighten the load on the top six, because that's been the biggest issue this year. When the top six doesn't score at five on five, and especially if the power play doesn't score, nobody in that bottom six is giving you goals. So to actually get them to get a goal from a defenseman too, that's really helpful. They need this in more games. And this is Captain Obvious speaking here, but the Rangers need Ryan Carpenter to score a, a little bit more f- for more frequently. Doesn't have to be every him. game. Obviously, it's Ryan Carpenter is yeah. a fourth line center. Like where no one's asking him to score thirty goals, but nine, I mean, ten like, by the like end 10, of the year, he, like 10, twelve. He should have. Like something. Yeah. I mean, you know, just anything realistic that could yeah. help the team. In, in moments that they really need one to, to go in. And Ryan Carpenter scored one, his first as a Ranger last night, and that's that's awesome. I would like to see him at least be a little bit more involved offensively. And again, like he's he's the defensive fourth line center. He's not really there to score, but it's always nice when your fourth line can score a goal when you when you need it the most and put some pressure off of your top six who can sc- who ha- is tasked with scoring every single game when you have Ryan Carpenter when maybe Sammy Blay wants to score every now and again like that would be really cool because he gets paid more money than than maybe he should right now and he's not scoring a whole lot of goals like maybe he, if he if he'd like to get involved that would be great as well the uh, the the a uh, sign of a great team is when no matter what line is out there they are dangerous you have to watch out for somebody or maybe even the whole line to to score when the team needs one or you're not expecting them to score or be dangerous or all of that. For now, the Rangers right now, if their top line isn't out there, if their second line isn't out there, what, is, is Sammy Blay going to score for you? Is Julian Gothier going to score? He's going to drive to the net and then miss, probably. And that's it. Like, that's your, that's your bottom six. And the Rangers need more from those guys right now. So you sounded like um, a faculty advisor in college talking about Sammy Blay saying he should get involved. You should be doing something. (laughs) Are you just sitting in your dorm room playing Fortnite and eating Cheetos? You should be in a club, Sammy. You should be in this game. Every time the puck touches his stick, he just looks so uncomfortable. It's it's jarring because he never gets a pass. Granted, he's not playing with particularly talented players, so he never gets good passes. But, like, at some point, you would think, okay, I'm in the NHL. If this is a bad pass, I need to be able to adapt my body positioning to be able to still play this puck without it being an automatic turnover, which is what happens 90% of the time he has the puck at his feet is the other team ends up with it because he just doesn't look fast enough. And I get it. He's a big, lumbering type guy. If he gets ahead of steam going, he's relatively quick. But body positioning-wise, hands-wise – The reason the Rangers took a flyer on him, and I was talking about this with somebody a couple weeks ago, I forget who it was. In junior, he had crazy shot rates, like just shooting the puck. He was really good at getting pucks on the net accurately. They didn't always go in, but he was able to generate a lot of offense that way. And the Rangers saw upside of saying, okay, this guy shoots a lot. He's big. We think if we give him a little bit of runway, he might be able to be something a little more than he's been to this point. Whereas with the Blues, not really a top six guy. Occasionally occasionally got up in that top six for the Blues before he got to the Rangers. But he's been frustrating. I got to say it, and I, I don't know which game we should talk about him in. I think vz has been the best bottom six guy who wasn't on the kid line. Like of Gaudreau, Reeves, Carpenter, Gautier. I, I think you got a real argument that Jimmy Vesey's PTO is actually helping them a lot more. I mean, realistically, you get Reeves out, you play a fourth line of some combination of Goodrow, Carpenter, and um, Vesey when everybody's healthy. That's not an awful fourth line. It, it, and realistically, that should be the goal here. Dress Reeves as minimally as possible. He looks done. Uh, it, it, he yeah, just yeah. he just doesn't have it. I, and I, it was stupid to give him a two-year deal last year. I understand that was the only way he was agreeing to be traded here was to if he got a second year, but he just looks done as a player. I give re give VZ 
give Gautier even you got to keep those guys in there. Carpenter and Goudreau is fine. You got to give them a wing that can actually do something. I don't think it's Blay. They're stuck with Blay because of the money he's making. I know we got a question earlier that asked, should they try and trade him? The, the front office, want, this is their guy. They gave yeah. a, a, a real player for him because they thought they saw something in him. They're going to ride him into the, they're going to ride him until he sinks. Realistically, I don't think he'll get a qualifying offer after this year if he keeps playing like this. I think he will be with another organization unless he agrees to take a pay cut, in which case I could see him staying. But to get to be getting paid, I think 1.5, 1.6, something like like that that's a lot of money for somebody who's giving you pretty much nothing yeah well same thing with ryan reeves like he's getting paid well 1.75 and yes yeah he's i mean he's he was he's he done. was not a great player last year but this year he's 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 done like he's as you said like he's he just is not an nhl player right now like he is way too slow he wasn't the fastest player before this season but this year is just he's He's way too slow. He's too lumbery. He's he's he doesn't know what to do with the puck when he has it. When he doesn't have it, like he doesn't know what's going on. Like it's it's really tough. And again, the locker room loves him. And that's if that's if that's the if that's what's true, then make him assistant coach. Like it's not that hard to to just be like, okay, you clearly can't play the NHL level anymore. Just stand behind the bench and be Phantom a coach. IR. Like, Phantom IR. Get, I- put him on IR. Like do something. Like I don't because he. Like you, you can't you can't justify giving him a roster spot right now. And Jimmy VC, as you said, has looked f- solid. Like yeah. he, at least for right now, has exceeded all of my expectations for what he could have been. Like he's he's looked really good defensively, and and, and he's been more involved in the offense as I more so than I expected him to be like, he has been somebody that's been a pleasant surprise for this team. And, and we were talking about him when, when they first announced the PTO, because we, we saw the body of work that he had prior to this season. I'm like, well, he's a guy. And, and, but now seeing how he's played on this team and how he's kind of been just a, a new, a new sense of confidence that he's played with throughout the season so far, he's been a pleasant surprise. The bottom six, though, still needs work. Uh, offensively, they kind of provide nothing until they're kind of gifted a goal. Like Barkley Goudreau in that last night was literally gifted a goal. Like he was just skating on by, and the puck just came to him right in front of the goalie, and he so, and he just so happened to score it. And like that was kind of the end of the game f- uh, from there. The Rangers really need somebody in the bottom six that can be more dangerous in the offensive zone than what they currently have. Oh, 100%. Um, I'm going to pull up the shot map for the Nashville game as we talk about it here, because I do think this is interesting when you look at shot by shot of who has the most dangerous scoring chances, where they are. This is to have 34 shots on two expected goals. That's like 0.004 expected goals per scoring chance which is lower than what they typically do in a game. But you're looking at the heat map. And I know on the stream, my mouse doesn't show up, but Gautier missing the net, closest scoring chance. Truba, closest scoring chance. Vizi, Goudreau, Kako, Heedle. Where's Zabinijad? Where's Kreider? Where's Trocek? I, I, like, I get it. Nashville isn't an awful defensive team. They are okay. And UC Soros hasn't played great this year, but he has shown you a strong body of work in the past. That was a maddening game for a variety of reasons, but I pulled up the shot map specifically here because this is what we're this is what a lot of people talk about when they say the Rangers play too much east west and they don't take it to the net enough. Is the t- the best players on this team when we talk about Kreider, Zabinajad, Panarin, they're not taking the puck to the net. They're settling for that 30 shot, that foot, that shot, that 30 foot shot from near the top of the circles, the low danger chance. And without traffic in front, it's a waste of a shot. You're not going to do that an nhl goalie is going to make that save on a 35 foot wrist shot if they got a clean line of sight on it and that's why that game felt so frustrating was they weren't they weren't working for it they weren't getting quality chances they settled for volume and this is not a volume based scoring team carolina for years now has been a volume team where they're going to have 48 scoring chances and none of them are going to be great but they're going to get secondary chances where off whether it be a rebound a deflection a greasy goal you know the ugly ones that the people who stand between the benches are talking about during the game the rangers aren't particularly good at that and it's why their offense can be so agonizing to watch at times because there's not a plan when it gets ugly it's just shoot the puck from as far away as possible and hope it goes in 
They are employing a type of offense that includes 17 passes, and they expect all 17 to go onto the tape of the next person's stick, and eventually they'll score some highlight reel goal, and everybody will go home happy, and the Rangers win again, and all in yada, yada, yada. Okay, well, you can't expect that to happen at 5-on-5 five five against anybody in the nhl even at five on four you can't expect it to happen every single game this is the nhl these are the best players in the world even if you are playing some of the worst teams in the nhl these are still nhl caliber players and you yeah. cannot expect to have panarin passing it to zabinajad and zabinajad passing it to whoever like every time cross ice and expecting all these passes to just magically appear on their tape and it just goes in everything goes well sometimes you just have to get to the dirty areas take it take it to the net like julian goodley does it all the time if somebody like zabinajet who actually has hands and more than one move can can do it and 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 shock everybody right now because uh, uh, if it's not julian gothe no one's doing it like if it's a bit of jatter Kreider can can use some of that that strength that they had that we know that they have the strength that they have the speed that they have the the skill that they have around the net to to just get there and and score a dirty goal that gives the the rangers the one goal lead or tie the game or do something that's not trying to pass east to west for the 18,000th time in that game that everybody sees coming like maybe they'd score more but right now they are too predictable and they are not adapting quickly enough to how the other team's defense is approaching their offense the last thing i want to say about nashville before we talk about the arizona game Halak gave them a chance to win, and we talked about it last week with him. You need your backup goalie to give you a chance. To only concede two goals, more often than not, if you're a good team, you should be able to win if your backup's only conceding two. It's nice to see he's getting a little bit better the more work he gets. Ideally, if he's going to keep playing like this, they'll be all right when he starts. But they gotta fi- they got to put the puck in the net. That's the biggest thing. Is it interesting to you that Gallant played Halak against Nashville as opposed to Arizona. Um, Again, we talked about this a couple weeks. We talked about this a few weeks ago when they did it the other way around, where they started they started Shesterkin against the bad – the same way, where they started Shesterkin against the bad team and Halak against the good team. Um, It's trying to load it up where especially knowing that it's a back-to-back and your team is going to be tired and you got to travel – I understand why you would start Shesterkin in that situation because he's going to give you a better chance to win than Halak in behind a tired team. And Igor gave them a vintage performance yesterday. He was outstanding. That game very easily could have gotten away from the Rangers if he wasn't at, if he wasn't as locked in as he was. I mean, they got dramatically outchanced. They got out puck controlled, and they won with the recipe they had last year. They got some depth scoring. They had a Fox goal in there, which helps when you can get a defenseman goal in there, but. Again, I'm going to pull it up. The shot map against Arizona, this is this is hideous. Look, the best scoring chances are two are Ryan Carpenter, one is Barkley Goodrow, one is Kako, one is Abinajad, one is Goodrow. I mean, where is everybody else on this team? I understand that Arizona was really doing a good job defensively and not giving a lot, and it's part of why the Rangers weren't generating a lot of scoring chances in that game, but To have 18 shots at five on five against a lottery team, especially one that doesn't have, you know, like Jacob Chikrin is a decent defenseman. But aside from him, there isn't anybody on this Coyotes team that's like, oh. They have Shane Gossespernick. Come on. You gave Flyers legends. We're talking about defense. We're talking about defense. (laughs) Offensively, he's good. Offensively, he's very good. He's really good as a power play quarterback. They've got um, Denilson Mayo, who's not awful. They traded for Valamaki from the Flames, who's not awful, but needs a lot of, who just needs minutes. But this isn't exactly like the 2003 Devils here. To only have 18 shots at five on five, man, that's just terrible. And again, I get it. You're tired. Everybody's tired. This is the National Hockey League. If you're given excuses like that, it's not acceptable. It's okay to say, hey, we got some bad luck. We didn't finish. Okay, that is reasonable. You can't say we're tired, we're hurt. Everybody is tired and hurt in this league. It's like these shot maps are really like they're gross to look at. And you yeah. and you are right. Like these against bad teams, you should be in front of the net all game 
for for all 60 minutes like that th this should be your invitation to literally walk in and do whatever you want because you are the better team with the better offense and better players and better talent to to only have 18 five on five shots and for the best opportunities to come from depth players like there's a like there's one or two names that were in there that were in close but at a certain point those those top six guys got to look inwards. Like you can't you can't score all of your goals on the power play and and then just walk home and be happy with it. You have to start scoring when everybody is on the ice. Like you can't live and die by the power play, like they have been. And the the top six like Mika Zibanejad finally scored some five on five goals last week. Uh, congrats, welcome to the party, Mika Zibanejad. Like. The, they need to, they need to start being more of a force at five on five because if they don't start doing it soon, teams will start disrespecting them. They will start being like, okay, well, Zabenajad, Panera, they're just gonna pass it around for forty five seconds and shoot from forty feet out, and we're just gonna block it and go the other way. If they if they really want to be feared in this league, they're gonna have to start driving to the net, creating more opportunities for themselves. Because right now, November fourteenth. It ain't happening. They're not generating. They're generating a lot of volume right now. They need somebody needs to tell Truba to stop shooting. That would be my first suggestion as to how to improve some of these on ice results. I know we're just talking about overpassing, but the the Truba shot that goes in one point five percent of the time, that's not a valuable scoring chance. And unless you are already established in the zone and you have a decent chance at a recovery. That's essentially a turnover. And I know a lot of people don't think of it like that, but if you don't hit the net, the other team's probably got a better chance of recovering the puck. It's got to be on net. Otherwise, it's not worth that shot from outside, from above the circles. There's just not a lot to gain from that unless you have traffic. If you have traffic in front or you think you have a good chance at a recovery, okay. But right now, they're fighting it. They are pressing for offense, and it's why the offense isn't coming. It's very cliche. It's a very old-school mindset of when you're pressing harder, you're not going to play well. Well, yeah, it's true. The harder you're trying to do something, the more difficult it's going to become. You're going to take bad penalties. You are going to squeeze your stick too hard. You're going to flub passes. You're going to flub shots. They need to keep things straight line, simple. More chances closer to the net. Less only scoring on the power play. Five on five goals are nice. Get the bottom six resembling an NHL team. And maybe if they can figure out that defense a little bit, I know they're going to keep insisting on Truba playing because he's the captain and whatever, but if he's going to keep playing like this, they're going to need that third pair of Schneider and whether it be Hayek or Jones to be good. And granted the last week, week and a half, that third pair has been very good. And speaking of Hayek, cause we got a tweet earlier from, from John Kavanaugh at Kavanaugh uh, SJU who, who asked like, can Hayek be the third pair defenseman on this team and well if he's playing the way that he has been recently i my confidence in him is growing by the by yes. the game like for for all the the negative things that we've brought up rightfully so about Libor hayek and his game the last couple of weeks he's been solid like his his yep. skating he's looked confident with the puck he's he's put it, he's put a couple of a couple of guys on 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 say on 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 the ice like he's he's been just confident with it and and trying to to get the puck out of his own zone and and just been an actual NHL defenseman for once like he's he's looked good can yep. he my my question with 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 him and and to answer the question that we got is like can he continue to do that if he can sustain this kind of confidence that he's that he's shown that he's been playing with the last couple of weeks and he can continue to to do that at least to a to a certain extent throughout this whole season and not look like the Libra Hayek that we all know and quote unquote love then yeah I'm sure like he can be fine but as just as long as he doesn't revert back to what we are used to seeing out of him, because the second he does that, he's out of the lineup. At least I would hope so. But right now, like, he's fine. I mean, yeah, that's the way Gallant has handled the third pair. The two years he's been here is as soon as somebody has a bad game, they're out. And until the other person has a bad game, they're out. 
that's realistically what it's been. And that's how most NHL coaches are, especially when it comes to younger guys. Is as soon as they might be building a little bit of confidence, they have a bad game. They don't play for a week and a half because the NHL is stupid and doesn't understand the idea of you need repetitions to get better, especially as a defenseman. Um, we got another question in there that was about um what they can do to improve. We said this last week, and unfortunately, unless they're gonna trade somebody who's actually making money. Wave Ryan Reeves or wave Sammy Blay, there are no solutions because they do not have cap space to bring anybody in right now. Well, they won't wave Sammy Blay because that is still their prime, their 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 biggest their jewel. Their, that's their, their project. Well, their project, but also that's still pretty much the the jewel they got in the Pavel Buchnevich trade. Yes, they got a second round pick out of that, but in terms of tangible players that are currently playing, I forget. The, I forget if they like who, who if they still have that second round pick or they drafted they or like, traded it. They traded it away. Whoever like that second round pick isn't currently on the ice for the Rangers. Like who, who is on the Rangers right now for them currently? Sammy Blay, a guy who hasn't done anything for them offensively. Yes, I understand. Like he is still coming back from the horrific injury he had last season, so he's not as fast as he potentially could be. But that doesn't affect your hands. That doesn't affect how you see the ice when you're out there. That doesn't impact your your hockey IQ and how hungry you are to get to the dirty areas, to get to the front of the net, to 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 score a goal. Like it, it doesn't impact any of those things. And I'm not seeing a whole lot from those areas out of Sammy Blay. Like, can he be faster? I mean, yeah, sure, but you know the the leg injury that he sustained, like it was horrible, and he's still. You know, game by game, he's. I feel like hopefully he's getting more and more in tune with with being an NHL player again after not playing for a whole year. But ultimately, leg injuries don't impact how confident you are with the puck on your stick. And if he doesn't start figuring it out soon, that's going to be a major problem for the Rangers because that's what they got for a guy yeah. that can score. You traded a guy who can score for a second round pick and a guy who right now can't score. And, oh, the Rangers are having trouble scoring goals? Oh, you know, if only somebody could have seen this coming. Hey, man. We put in we're the not, work. We're, we're not GMs. What do we know? We put in the work. It's just a matter of if anybody wants to listen. Okay, before we get out of here, we'll do three stars of the week, and then we'll talk about the two games they play this week because they only play two games between now and next Monday. So three stars of the week. Uh, you went first last week. I'll kick us off. Jimmy Vesey, I mentioned him before. Uh, pleasant surprise in the bottom six. I didn't expect much from him. He was playing on a fourth line on a Devils team that finished second in the draft lottery last year. To get anything out of him is a pleasant surprise. Adam Fox, thank you. We appreciate you. You're the one defenseman I know we can count on every single night. Ryan Lindgren getting there, but still, you know, not the same type of player as Adam Fox where every time he's on the ice, he's making the team around him better. He has the single best impact of expected goals of anybody on the team. Second is actually Filipino, which I found interesting earlier. And then I have Hayek third, just like you do. Hayek's been out good the last week and a half, and they really needed it, especially last week when Lindgren didn't play. Yeah, and I have Libra High for the same reasons as you do. He's been exceeding my expectations by tenfold. Like, you know, over the last week or so, he's been a, a quality NHL defenseman, somebody that we expected to see for years and 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 years, and years of Libor Hayek being a New York Ranger. And finally, after what feels like year 78, Libor Hayek has, over the past week, figured out how to be an NHL player. So that's that's really good. Hopefully, hopefully he can continue that. Ryan Carpenter scored his first goal as a Ranger last night. Good for him. I mean, it's it's always a good story. And somebody who isn't, uh, as we as we talked about earlier, I would hope to see maybe 9, 10 goals out of him throughout the season. Hopefully he scores more. That first one, always the hardest, especially when you're on a new team. So good for him. And the Ranger Dads, they gave us great content, especially as – I tweeted out earlier this week, I wake up every morning and I thank Adam Fox is after being a Rangers fan because that's the reason why Adam Fox is a Ranger. So thank you to Adam Fox's dad for that. Uh, they gave us some great content. They were fun. They they read the lineups a few times, like the, the videos are, uh, of them and all the questions and all that like that. That's always fun to watch and it's good content. So they get a start. Okay. Last thing before we get out of here. Only two games this upcoming week, and unfortunately, they're late games. I hate – I the West Coast trip is the worst part of the season every single year. 
I'm too old to be staying up to one o'clock for a regular season <laughs> hockey game, bro. Like I might be in bed and awake till one o'clock, but to actively be committing brain power to watching hockey, to remember things, to write things down. That's a lot to ask for a game in November. I mean, yes and no. Like if you're somebody like me that always wakes up early in the mornings, but when it gets to the nighttime, can't go to bed anyway, then those, those West coast games are, are, Giving me life form, like giving me life force, because I if if not the Rangers, then I'll put on somebody else to watch. Like I'll, I will watch L.A. play Chicago or whatever. Like, but I you would... don't actually have to care. That's the difference. Okay, yes, but like it's hey, it, if it's a night game, it's a if it's a late night game, it's a late night game. And Seattle, they they're not the greatest of teams, but like they they come to play and they're. Uh, they're better than they were last year, which isn't saying a whole lot, but Philip Grubauer is at least not as bad as yes. he was. So that's that's not gonna be it's not gonna be a, a hopefully a difficult game, but it won't be the it won't be the easiest of, of they're games not a bad either. defensive team. They're they're a solid yeah. defensive team. They don't score a lot, their goaltending is not great, but they don't give up a ton of chances, which against the Rangers team that is content to shoot from anywhere, that might be a bit of a problem. Um I'm not looking forward to that. And then Please beat David Quinn just so I don't have to see his face. For the love of God. <laughs> yes, yes. I, 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 That'd I, be great. I, I, I dislike David Quinn immensely. Please don't lose to him twice. Yeah, dude. If we, if the Rangers go 0-2 against, against David Quinn, like the the presser will just be, uh, uh, please, please, please don't lose David L Quinn plus again. ratio plus Boston. <laughs> Plus, you fell off. Yeah, as we get a comment from, from somebody that says, I am 60, work until 10 often, love late games. And hey, see, Good like, so it's, 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 you know, these late games, they got, they, got, they got a cult following. Can I say that? I guess they got, they got a cult following. I guess it's, not, it's not the favorite amongst a lot of people on the East Coast. But they they have their devoted fans, and for for some people, like I I like the late games, and maybe I don't care about like specifically a lot of them. I just put them on because I'm a psycho when it comes to the sport, and I will watch any game at any moment in time because it's the sport of hockey. But I I do appreciate those late game nights, those late those those late night games, because like once those seven p.m. games are over. Great. I can turn on ESPN Plus. I can turn on something else. And there's a 10 p.m. or a 1030 game and I could just watch hockey until two in the morning. It's great. It's great stuff. The last thing I want to say before we get out of here and get you guys going for next week, ESPN Plus on the Xbox app has a quad box feature where you can multi box things in. And it's really the only reason I have an Xbox at this point, like Andrew and I were talking about before. My Xbox is a $500 Roku stick, but I can watch four games at once on the ESPN app on it. So that's a very useful $500 Roku stick. Hashtag not sponsored, promise. Uh, God, if we were sponsored by Microsoft, <laughs> you'd, I'd be wearing a Microsoft shirt and the Xbox right. would be here on the counter. That's right. Yeah. I, for, for, and just to, to put a pin on the whole defense situation, like it just, and we got a comment about this from, uh, from Seamus, who's at, 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 at post him notes as well. Like the whole Zach Jones situation, do just sit, just sit Truba for a week, just sit Truba for a week, play Zach Jones, let Jacob Truba heal. Like whatever's, whatever he's got going on. I don't understand the point of having Jacob Truba play 18, 20 minutes a night when he's, getting worse because he can't heal his injuries and two like he's looked out of place quite frequently this season yeah. and just give him a, just give him some time to, to to get better and play zach jones like do you really not have any confidence in zach jones i'm not i'm not out here saying he's like adam fox or anything but like i mean is he really that is a healthy zach jones worse than an injured jacob truba like i don't i don't think that's true Okay, last thing before we say goodbye. Last thing before we say goodbye. If you guys haven't seen it yet, doing a raffle for one of my friends is having a tough time. They need a little bit of help. If you are so inclined and want a chance to win a large Artemi Panarin jersey for $5, all you got to do is donate to the GoFundMe that's pinned on my Twitter account. Five bucks, send me a screenshot of your donation. You're in. We have 20 entries at the moment. The more the merrier. It's going to a good cause. It would really mean a lot. Even if you can't donate, signal boost it. Be really appreciated. Hockey community has been great. To get 20 alone is really nice. And it, the hockey community, when it needs to, can be very helpful. 
Absolutely. It's it's important. I, like like Nick said, even if you can't donate, if you don't have the money, then just retweet it, share it with your friends. Yeah. It, this this is we we don't share these things unless they're important, unless they're necessary to do so. And and this is important for for us. So please, if you can't donate, then please share. Uh, send it send it to your friends, send it to your family, whoever. Uh, as many people as we can get to to see the the GoFundMe, the better. Thank you, Andrew. We will see you guys next week. Make sure you are subscribed to the show wherever you get your podcast. Please, if you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, leave a five-star review. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, like the video. That helps other people find the video in the algorithm that watch things about the Rangers. That would be very helpful. Um, make sure to be watching every week. We're live most of the time live on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Between 6, 6.15, we usually start. Um, make sure to follow the personals at Andrew Chelney, Ch- uh, C-H-E-L-N-E-Y. Make sure to follow me at Nick Zararis, Z-A-R-A-R-I-S. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. There's only two games, so if anything goes wrong in one of them, it's going to be a really, really frustrating week because nobody's going to shut up about it. And we'll get to yell so that you don't have to. That way you can save your voice. That's so deeply we care about you. We appreciate that you've joined us for the ride. See, I've, I've memorized this now. It's been how many episodes? I've, I got it. I got it. We got to figure it out. That's good stuff. Self-referential that's right. stuff. That keeps That's building a brand, Andrew. That's good stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Later. I'll see you guys next week.